Welcome back to the shop guys. In this video, I'm gonna do a couple modifications to the Council Tools five pound splitter. Now don't get me wrong, the five pound splitter is a great ax as it comes out of the box to split softwoods. The first thing I'm gonna do is smooth out the cheeks a little bit and take away some of the rough edges. After that, I'm gonna adjust the edge geometry just a little bit. Let's get into it. So real quick, you'll notice I didn't say anything about changing the profile of the handle. I'm really happy with the handle. Notice right here, this is the only little bit of sapwood on the handle. The whole rest of the handle is heartwood, and I'm okay with that. And the grain orientation isn't perfect, but it's holding up just fine. Now we can see I've got a Kydex sheath on here that I made. I'm not going to go over how to make a Kydex sheath in this video. I'm not very skilled at it, but I will say I'm really liking the Kydex, especially this Hunter Orange. It's easy to see in the forest. The first issue I'm going to address is this sharp edge on both sides. Now, this isn't my main concern. My main concern is more of these forge marks and these grind marks and some of this slag that's left over. But because I'm going to kind of semi-polish this, I want to do my file work on this top edge first. The reason why I want to smooth over this edge is because, you know, we can see this shiny steel right here, this edge. I feel like it holds up the ax when you're splitting. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? You think that this, this sharp edge here affects how well the ax cuts? We know by looking at the old axes that about this section right here gets the most use. You know, we'll see this toe uh, worn down. It's been filed a lot more and there's a lot of, lot of steel missing on the toe as opposed to not as much missing on the heel. Now this is evident when we look right here at all these little chips. All these little chips are from when the ax went through a piece of firewood and hit a rock in the dirt. So I'll back up my idea by looking at this pound and three quarters, uh, early fifties plum super scout. If we look at the top, it's rounded over really nice. And this is not a high center line ax. This is a very thin profile, but it's still, to me, it's a wedge profile. Most of the time I round over the rough edges, but this time I think I'm just going to put a bevel on it. You hear that? Soft steel, hard steel. All right, we got this sharp edge knocked down. In the future, I may put a little bit more work into it and smooth it out a little bit more, but let's move on to the, the more important issue. We can see right here in this section that the bluing from after they'd forged it is worn down almost to bare steel. And right here, you see this little nick, that's down to bare steel. Now next up we can see what I'm, I'm assuming this is considered slag, all this dark stuff here. But there's a hard edge right there, okay? That's all a, a hard, sharp edge. Now it may not seem like much, but if you're going to be cutting a couple cords a year, that's slowing you down just a little bit. Now I'm not going to call out Council Tool on this because I feel like they provide a really good product for how much money it costs. Who I will call out for this type of quality is this one specific Swedish ax manufacturer and that's Gransfors Brooks. Gransfors Brooks, when they started out, they used this as marketing to say that, oh, that's, that shows that it was handmade by a blacksmith. Um, a woodsman, a lumberjack a hundred years ago, they they their ax would not look like this. They wouldn't have these hard edges. Uh, they wouldn't have this much friction, okay? A, a premium ax a hundred years ago would be ground smooth, the entire thing. One reason why you're gonna grind an ax smooth is because all of these little pits in here, what that does is that harbors dirt and dirt harbors moisture and moisture rusts ahead. 
Second off, I've already noted that all of all of this rough forge marks, that's merely friction and that's only gonna cost you more calories and more sweat when you're using this to work. Now, I will say this, it wasn't just Grants vs. Brooks, the vintage ax collectors of the world that say, oh, we like that patina, we, we like the, the rust in the pits and all of those marks, I get it. I like that too, and I think that that looks good. But the fact of the matter is, is for a user ax, something that you're, you're trying to either make money or, or heat your house with, or, or maybe say you, your life depends on it, all this is just gonna slow you down. So let's address this. First off, I do wanna leave a little bit of rough uh, forge marks. All kind of polish out from, from here down, and we'll leave this. So one thing I want to note is that I do have this clamp down. If you're going to be using a power tool on an axe, you really want the head or the entire axe to be clamped securely to the surface, uh, especially with the, you know something that's spinning around. Could you imagine if it just something caught and it flung that axe, right? Uh, we could have a, a bad day with that. So, so I'm going to start out with the key to the city. Uh, I've got a pretty worn out 40 grit flap disc on here, and I'm just going to gently uh, establish my line and knock off some of this slag and just get a little bit of off and then we'll move on to uh, some pneumatic power. Now next up I'm just going to put a mark roughly about, about right there and then And then I'll put one right, right there. And now I'll connect the two. Now when I grind up to this line, both sides will match. We can still see a couple of these little scratch marks from when they ground it at the factory. And getting up to this line right here, there's still a little bit of pits from the forge marks. So I'm going to start at 120 grit, go to 240, and then to 400. All right, seems as though going up to 400 grit brought out a lot more of the imperfections from my grinding and, and the factory grinding, but I can say it is way smoother and I'm really happy with that. I've got a lot to learn about polishing, um, which this isn't even polishing, right? So I'm gonna match this to this side. Hey guys, if you're liking this kind of content and you wanna help the channel out in any way, just give that thumbs up, dude. It helps so much. All right, I'm gonna do this and then we'll, we'll talk more about getting the edge tuned up. All right, next up, this rag's just soaked in WD-40. And I'm just gonna get all of these little particles off of here, get it cleaned up a little bit. So I would, you know, we can see these marks that are going this way, these little scratches, that's from the factory. But on this side, it's more, more visible. These marks are from me. So what I would have done different here on smoothing out these, these cheeks is I jumped straight from 40 grit to 120 grit off of the, the flap disc, off of the, the key to the city straight to 120 grit and and that's about all i would have done different now with that being said i do like this look right here kind of that pit and polish look right so i'm thinking 
I'm not going to do it now. Maybe, maybe when I get a new handle on this, if it, just kind of a pit and polish and get, kind of get that look going on the rest of this part and, and maybe transition it, smooth it. I don't know. It's already transitioned a little bit. Anyway, I'm happy. Let's move on to this issue right here. All right, so the edge. Um, oh, first off, let's look at, it is, Twenty-five degrees. I mean, almost dead nuts. Now, in the future, I probably will uh, make that a little bit steeper, and I'll probably get it somewhere around closer to the thirty degrees. But what we'll see here, you know, is there's no there's no micro bevel, okay? And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a micro bevel on it. And we'll see if that prevents some of this stuff from happening. Maybe not so much prevent, but reduce as much damage as we can. Obviously, you can reduce this damage by not splitting into the dirt. I get it. Now, I'm not gonna completely work out all these little chips, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I'm just, I'm just gonna put a quick little micro bevel on it and, and call it good. I probably won't even attempt to check the geometry. This is just a, a quick little tune-up. I'm assuming I'm probably going somewhere in the 45 degree range with this flip it over and do the other side we got our little micro bevel we're smoothed out on the cheeks and these these sharp edges up top are smoothed out a little bit so I'm pretty happy with that so this next thing is not so much a mod but kind of a tip that I've been working on now when I oil an axe handle off of camera I generally most of the time I clamp it in a vise and I set it straight up and down, okay? And that way, when the oil drips down, I just take my paintbrush and I pull it right back up. And I'm constantly pulling it back up, you know, cause I'll be in here in the shop just messing around and I've got time to do that. Well, what happens is, and this is good, that oil will start soaking in here into the eye, okay? Into that tongue wood, and that's good. This head is not loose at all. Uh, for one reason, the oil soaks in here. Additionally, I have, I've probably got 15 milliliters soaked in to the, the top of the eye. I'll sand it down a little bit, get that cleaned up, and then I'll just soak linseed oils. Just keep soaking it in. Now, what I'm getting at is, you see how shiny it is? Okay, I, I put some boiled linseed oil on it as a top coat after I put my raw linseed oil on and it's a little little sticky it was a little stickier than I preferred I left it on too thick what I notice is down here we see all of these what I've noticed is down here all of these marks from where I've hit a piece of firewood you know just going ham just being reckless with it really because it was so thick down here with the boiled linseed oil I think it again, you know, the name of the game today is reduce the friction. With this lubed up with a good heavy coat of linseed oil, I think that it helped it just kind of glide off of the firewood round as opposed to getting serious chunks in it, like that one, right? So anyway, this tip is, is to put, you know, put a good amount of linseed oil and let it get caked up, let it get that, that heavy layer and that'll, that'll reduce the friction on the handle and save the handle a little bit. This is my theory. Tell me what you think. If you think that that's, that's BS, I get it. Um, yeah, drop a comment, let me know. But I don't, I've thought about putting Kydex, a Kydex axe collar right here. Um, and I just can't get it right in my head to figure out how it would stay in there. In leather, leather's a little bit thick. 
and leather is going to get chewed up, you know, cord after cord, it's going to destroy it. So I've come to the conclusion that just run it, try to be careful. And when it breaks, put a new handle on it and, and stay away from the collar. So that's where I'm at on a splitting, on a splitting ax like this. All right, for my last step here, what I'm gonna do is I've got a, this is a pretty cool little tin. It's an older Benjamin Sheraton pellet can. And what I've got in here is a linseed oil beeswax uh, paste, okay? So back to reducing friction, what I'm gonna do So I'm just going to take a little bit of this paste. And lube it up and, and I'll probably split with this before it has a chance to dry and get caked on there. Um, kind of the same idea as getting boiled linseed oil down here. Matter of fact, I think I'll put some down here too. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Reduce friction, right? That's what it's about. That's the name of the game today. Yeah, might as well, you know what? I think I'm going to cover the whole head with it. All right, guys. Well, I think that's a wrap for this video. If you liked what you saw, uh, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Helps out the channel, like I was saying. And I hope this was uh, helpful. Again, this is just what I'm doing. This isn't the, the way it has to be done. This isn't law. So hope you guys have a good day. And for those of you that are watching this uh, Sunday morning, the 12th, remember that tomorrow, or correction, Sunday at noon, Pacific Standard Time, we're doing the drawing for the giveaway for the Mystery Axe Build Kit. That's a wrap. Have a good day.